Hey everyone, Super Fizz here, State of the Stake, number 32, I think. I have been more excited about this video than any other content or idea that I've put out. And because of that, it's taken me several days to really get it on paper, and actually several weeks to formalize the idea in my head. If I do things right, hopefully somewhere, maybe on my face, um, I'm learning to use Adobe Premiere, so hopefully you'll see this image that is the Ethereum beacon chain staking risks associated with staking. Uh, I don't love the name, it's in progress, but this is my first draft of something that I've actually been talking about probably for months now. What it does is solidify the concept that there are better and worse ways to stake. The information that I'm sharing, I, I have to back up and tell you what I see my role in the Ethereum ecosystem as. I consider myself the beacon chain health coordinator. And in that role, I want to foster a healthy community that promotes the stable growth of the Ethereum beacon chain. If you listen carefully to that, my goal is not to promote individual users. My goal is not to make sure that users make the most money. My goal is to promote the health of the chain itself. And the users, us, me and you, are parts of that system and we derive benefit from it. We can contribute to the health of the network um, and allow it to thrive and be as prosperous as it can be, as healthy as it can be by making good choices with our staking. And that kind of brings me to what we're looking at today. I'm a man of caveats. Let me caveat that by saying that um, I've shared this with a lot of people. Not all of the people I've shared this with like it. Some people feel like it reduces complex concepts to something that oversimplifies. I accept that feedback. I accept that some people do not find this to be a good choice. However, I feel that the benefits outweigh the costs. And with that, I know that many people are going to come from Twitter or the internet and they're going to be like, oh, that doesn't work because it's not scaled correctly or this should be here or that should be there. It is a, this is a qualitative list of staking opportunities that benefit both the user and the chain. So if I were benefiting one or the other, it might look different, but I'm benefiting the user and the chain. Let's go down the list really quickly. Green is solo staking. If you can solo stake, you should, really. Uh, and you'll find Nimbus at the top of the solo staking list. And while I say that it's unranked, between you and me, I'll tell you that there is kind of a ranking to it. And that ranking is uh, what I call the perceived minority of each client. And right now, we believe that Nimbus has the least market share. In order to promote the health of the beacon chain, it would be great if Nimbus had about... 25% of the market share. And so what I'd like to do is encourage us to consider Nimbus as our first staking client until we find some kind of information that suggests that Nimbus is on par with the other clients. If Lodestar or another client comes online, I can assure you they're going to jump to the top of the list because even though they may have bugs, the health of the network means that we support those clients and we give them attention and support and file bug reports with them and give them an opportunity to get on par with other clients. And that is kind of a manifestation of our biggest goal is not to make money for the end user, but to promote the health of the network. And that is why choosing a minority client is one of the best ways that you can benefit the network. Solo staking, Nimbus, Teku, Lighthouse, and Prism. Uh, we don't have a great metric to know what the actual beacon chain share, or what the client share of each of these clients is, what we have are a lot of guesses and a lot of estimations, um, but I feel like this is a fair ranking. So basically, if you're new to this, you want to try Nimbus, that's great. Give Teku a try. Um, Teku is an enterprise client that is developed in Java and it runs really well. It is kind of considered to be a little memory intensive, so you want to have at least, uh, well, I have 32 gigs of RAM. You might want to have at least 16 gigs of RAM for Teku, whereas Nimbus runs on, it can run on one CPU on four gigs of RAM. So if you're interested on using a Raspberry Pi, Nimbus is absolutely perfect for you. Lighthouse and Prism are both kind of all-purpose clients. They um, run with modest hardware in a lot of environments. They're both solid and both well-developed. So if you feel like Nimbus and Teku aren't right for you, then Lighthouse and Prism are great alternatives. 
All of that to say that solo staking should be the priority. If you have 32 Ether, if you know how to turn a computer on, uh, even if you consider using a, an Avado system or a DAP node system, those are great. Solo staking is the priority if you can do that. I recognize that not everyone can solo stake. That's okay. If you still have 32 Ether and you cannot run a, a machine to stake, then there are also a couple of options for you. And these are in yellow. They are Blocks Staking and Staked US. There are other services that offer kind of a similar solution. The benefit here is that they do not hold your your seed phrase or your private key. You actually give them a validator key. Well, let's, let's correct this. In blocks staking, they are a remote signer. You run a client on your computer that connects to a remote beacon chain to sign transactions. And in staked, I believe that you give them a, you create a validator key and give them that key and they stake on your behalf, but you keep the private key. While those aren't the same security standard as solo staking, they are still a very high standard. Now, all of these solutions, all of the top six solutions require that you have at least 32 Ether. And it's time to recognize that not everyone has 32 Ether, but they still want to stake. And so the best solution for not having 32 Ether, but still wanting to stake are non-custodial pools. Many of you know that none of them exist yet. They just aren't here. I do know they're coming very soon. Rocket Pool is the solution that I've talked about so much. And I hope this puts Rocket Pool into perspective. A lot of people have said, Fizz, you're a shill for Rocket Pool. Ah, not really. I like what Rocket Pool is doing. I like that they are a solid company who is focused on trustless, decentralized staking pools. And for that reason, I'm excited to talk about them. But in terms of their tokenomics, any of that stuff, um, I'm just, it's not really my thing. I'm interested in a healthy beacon chain. And for that reason, when Rocket Pool is released, I want you to watch it a few weeks, but if it, if everything comes back fine, if things look to be going well, then I would say that Rocket Pool is a, is probably the best solution for people with less than 32 Ether. As we go forward, hopefully there will be more, more pools that use similar technology. And in that case, I'm going to say things like use trustless decentralized pools like Rocket Pool. Now we get to the nitty gritty. So if you cannot do solo staking, if you don't have 32 Ether, we recognize that Rocket Pool is still out. Now is when we get into the hesitancy area. Uh, these are things that I do not like to recommend yet. And if you've heard me speak before, I will say, if you can't solo stake right now, the best thing you can do is just wait. And again, the best thing you can do is just wait. We have a committee called the Ethereum Due Diligence Committee. It's a group of people who have sent questionnaires to staking pools. They've collected a lot of information. And right now, actually, they're in the process of sorting through that information. When they finish sorting that through that information, they'll be able to rank those pools um, kind of on the same red, yellow, and green light system. It may be a different system, but whatever their data is, it will fit into this block. Uh, and so let's say a custodial pool is top notch. Well, it's still not going to be better than any than solo staking. It's still not going to be better than um, something like blocks or stake tool where you hold the keys and you know it's a trustless system. Please keep in mind that these are not pools are not preferred solutions, but that doesn't make them wrong. There are going to be good pools, and if it if it is the only thing that works for you, then by all means please participate and use a good pool. That's what we're looking for. At the bottom of this list are centralized exchange staking. Right now, I know that a lot of exchanges are offering incentives for you to stake with them. They're like, hey, if you give us your Ether, we'll give you a new Maserati and you'll be happy. And you're like, oh my gosh, that's the great deal. I'm making so much from staking with this exchange. I want to tell you that that is a very unhealthy idea for the beacon chain. Right now, we're seeing exchanges pour in hundreds of thousands of Ethereum to create validators on the beacon chain. And this is a, a serious risk of, of centralization, and it gives these staking, or I'm sorry, these exchanges more market share of the beacon chain than we're comfortable with. And that's really why I want us to push up this chain and decentralize the beacon chain as much as possible. You're going to say, but I can make more on an exchange and it's easier. 
The fault is that it's not healthy for the network. These exchanges do not have any investment or any interest in the health of Ethereum. They care about one thing and one thing only. I don't fault them for that. They care about money. And what they want to do right now is to get you in their ecosystem and staking with them so that they hold your Ether and you hold a placeholder token that actually has no real value. Once you're in their ecosystem, they hope to keep you uh, sort of locked in so that they're in control of your Ether. This is just not healthy for the beacon chain, and I hope that everyone will think twice before using this solution. Even if you have an uncle or a father or a grandparent who's like, yeah, I'm only going to stake with these centralized staking ex or centralized exchanges, I really hope you'll talk them out of that. I hope that you'll encourage them to explore other solutions. You know, you heard me just talk about custodial pools, and I was like, ah, I don't like that idea. But at least custodial pools offer more decentralization than centralized exchanges. What would not be healthy for the beacon chain is if, let's say there were four big exchanges, if they controlled 66% of the beacon chain uh, together, it would be anti-fragile. Now, I don't think they're going to collude. I don't think anything bad is going to happen. But as the beacon chain health coordinator, I want to prevent that scenario. And as an Ethereum holder, it's in your best interest to prevent that scenario. So I hope you'll work with me to do that. Now, this data is for December 2020, and my intention is to continue developing and improving this. I really hope you'll add suggestions uh, and let me know kind of what I've missed or what you think I could do better. One of the things I'm not going to do is is kind of pump something I, I don't believe in. I talk about the things that I believe are right. You get the honest fizz every time I talk, whether or not you like it. While my intention is not to be at odds with something like centralized staking where I'm saying don't do that, I use actually, I have accounts at three of four of those places and I'm happy to use them. They're just not right for staking. While they may be great companies and while some of these pools may be fantastic, I want you to use your own due diligence and kind of keep in mind the health of the beacon chain as you're staking. So I hope this worked out. I'm going to go try and edit this and hopefully stick this somewhere on the screen. I don't know if I'll, if I'll figure it out, but I appreciate your time. And I hope that this guide provides you some useful information. One of the things I struggle with, if you watch this and don't apply this knowledge, it's all for naught. So if you have 32 Ether and you were about to put it into a centralized exchange, but you suddenly realize why it matters and you go to with a solo staking route instead, then I really feel like this is worth the effort. Uh, and I hope that works for you. Thanks for your time. Have a great day.